Hi, everyone. So my name is Mary Thingval, uh, as Sanjeev said. Uh, before I go any further and explain what I'm going to be talking about, I know better than to not introduce my friend here. This is Ember. He goes everywhere that I do. He's a medical alert service dog for me. I'm a type 1 diabetic, and he helps let me know when my blood sugar starts to go low. And that's a whole conversation about monitoring and performance for another time. But today, I'm going to be talking to you about leveraging the power of your technical community and really working collaboratively with this community to bring more value both to your company as well as the broader community as a whole. So I've been noticing a lot of patterns. I've been working with these technical communities for over 12 years now. And one of the patterns that I've noticed along the way is that a lot of companies understand that having super excited and engaged community members is great but they don't really know how to actually create, foster, grow, and collaborate with that group of people. And the answers that a lot of companies are turning to these days, especially B2D, business to developer companies, is developer relations. How many of you are familiar with developer relations? I'm seeing the DevRel team at Postman wave their hands. That's awesome. <laughs> so for those of you who aren't familiar with this concept, it's basically technical community building. And it's this idea that you have a team inside your company whose main focus is the community that you're trying to collaborate with, with the product that you're trying to produce for them on their behalf. And the idea is that this team strives to build relationships with this developer community or the technical community, and they act as a liaison between your company and the developer audience, who's the end users of your product. And while most professionals at your company have the best interest of the business at heart, right, with sales or with marketing or with pushing the product forward like most of you are involved in, DevRel professionals tend to have the best interest of the community as their driving factor. And they, of course, care about the success of the business because that's what pays their bills too, but they understand that if the community is happy and successful as a result of using the product, the business is far more likely to succeed as well. And this relates back to a lot of what Abhinav was talking about in his keynote, right? The more collaborative the community is able to be, the more Postman is able to give back in the feature requests, the more public they're able to be, the happier the community is going to be, and the more that Postman is going to succeed as well. So these B2D companies are hiring typically developer advocates, which are the developer relations professionals who typically have a developer background. And they're hiring them with the intention of building out these relationships with customers who will turn into essentially unpaid external advocates for the company. And this is kind of every company's dream, right? Hire one or two people who can in, in turn recruit other people to do the same work for free, right? Sounds great. Unfortunately, all too quickly after developer advocates are hired, the excitement about this new developer relations initiative turns from this exclamation point light bulb moment into a huge question mark. And it does so for one major reason, metrics. Because how in the name of everything good do we measure the collaborative work that these developer relations professionals are doing with your community, right? You can't put a price on I took someone out for coffee three times, and we had great discussions about the product feedback, and then they you know, became a, a more engaged user of an open source product, right? How does that benefit the bottom line of your company? And when you ask developer advocates this question about, hey, what are the metrics that you're tracking, or what's the ROI, you tend to get this response. Right? And I know I've made that face when I've been sat down by stakeholders in the company and they go, cool. So I hear you know, you're speaking at a lot of conferences and you're talking to a lot of people, but what's the actual value of what you're doing? Because most executives just don't understand the value of what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And I don't really blame them, right? It's difficult to understand how collaboration and how building relationships really impacts the bottom line. And I get that executives at companies have to explain the bottom line and where they're spending their money. And any board is going to be asking questions that go beyond just, how many conferences did your team go to? Or how many webinars did you give? Or how much traffic did you get to your website as a result of a technical blog post, right? So what we need is a metric that works for stakeholders, whether it's board members, whether it's company executives, developer relations management, as well as the developer relations team, because the collaboration with our community goes beyond just the handful of us who are on these DevRel teams at companies. It goes into the product team, who's processing the feedback that you're working with. It goes into the engineers, who are fixing the bugs and submitting the feature requests 
or excuse me, uh, fulfilling the feature requests that Abhinav spoke about earlier. So I have this concept called DevRel Qualified Leads that kind of solves this collaborative metric and helps you understand more succinctly what the value is that we're supplying on a regular basis. Um, some of you might be asking why I'm using the term qualified leads, and we'll get to that in a second. But before we do, I want to understand how many of you understand what a marketing qualified lead is. Show of hands. A handful. OK, cool. So for those of you who aren't aware, how many of you have gotten a badge scanned at a conference? A few more. How many of you are aware of the fact that people or companies scan badges at conferences after you have a conversation with them? Is the audience just not responsive today? <laughs> uh, so basically, if you attend a conference and you have a conversation with someone at a booth, they'll often scan your badge, right? And that idea is that you are now someone who's in their system as what's called a marketing qualified lead. So you're somebody who the marketing team has identified as a potential customer down the road. They have your information at this, in this example while you're at a conference. They then vetted your information to make sure that you're someone that meets their standards for a potential customer. And then they pass you off to the sales team for them to reach out to you with a sales pitch down the road. And marketing has now done its part of filling the sales pipeline. Their job is done, right? They don't worry about whether or not you actually become a customer down the road. If you do, that's fantastic. But that's now the sales team's responsibility. And this business metric is fairly well understood among most stakeholders and companies. It's typically accepted that sales is a multi-step process and that marketing has the top of funnel responsibilities. But then what's, once marketing's job is done, once they've passed your information off to sales, they go back to finding new ways to create more leads or people who have found the website or the company and are interested in the product. And then they again vet you to make sure that you're good potential customers and pass you off to sales. And the cycle repeats. So like I said, some of you might be asking, why do I choose a term like qualified leads? And especially those of you who said you're familiar with developer relations might be asking this, given that there's such a strong relationship to sales in the marketing qualified leads example. And for those of you who are familiar with my work, you know I don't believe developer relations or community management should ever, ever have sales metrics to gauge their success. It muddies up that relationship building side of things that I referenced earlier, right? Because how do, you, how do you simultaneously build a close relationship with someone and build up that trust and then turn around and go, great, you're going to give us money now? It doesn't, it doesn't work so well, right? It muddies up that relationship and makes it difficult for the community to really trust you. But like I said, most stakeholders understand this relationship of marketing passing off the work to sales when I say qualified leads. So the term is recognizable. And while most people might only think of sales as the resulting success, you can add on top of that foundational knowledge rather than trying to introduce a completely new concept, which leads us to the collaborative aspect. Because instead of it just being a handoff to sales, it could be a handoff to any number of other departments as your developer relations team is working with your community. And tweaking something slightly is always easier than completely rebranding, right? Do I have any marketers or marketing related people in the room who can understand that concept? Maybe? No? OK. So anytime you're trying to pivot with your product or anything like that, right, making small incremental changes, rather than saying, we've been doing A all along, and suddenly we're going to be doing V, and you have no idea why. So building on top of that knowledge that's already understood within your company is huge. And I came up with this term, like I said, after meeting with some of my clients and working with some different teams, where the goals of their teams and the collaborative, collaborative results they were looking for were things like, how many hires did we get out of the hackathon that the DevRel team put on? Or how many marketing qualified leads did we get from an engineering conference? And things like that where it didn't really make sense. DevRel isn't that in-between piece, right? They can pass people off to recruiting. We can pass off feedback to product. But we're not responsible to make sure that the feedback that we pass off to product actually gets onto the next roadmap. We can advocate for that. But there's a gap there. So. I have some examples, and I've touched on a few of these already, but ways that we can actually pass those uh, contacts off to the next team and actively be encouraging collaboration both inside our company as well as our company back to the rest of the community. 
So sometimes we'll pass people off to marketing with a case study or some guest blog posts or content if it's a community member who's exceptionally good in the forum or is talking a lot about us online. You can also pass people off to product with feedback or a beta tester, someone who might be a good opportunity for the, the company to understand where the community is coming from a little better and who can offer direct feedback to the product, product as you're putting it out. Engineering is, of course, another area. You can pass community members off to engineering for hard to solve bugs or things that we aren't really able to figure out. So some of those bugs that Abhinav mentioned at the beginning, right? Being able to pass your community members off and say, especially if it's an open source product, hey, can you help us duplicate this issue or replicate this issue? Can you help us fix this problem? Can you help us figure out what the best solution is for this down the road? Business development or partnerships. Maybe you meet someone in the community who is really passionate about your product and really wants to integrate it with another product, like we were talking about with the Atlassian team. Maybe they're willing to help you build out those integrations rather than that being solely a responsibility of your team to do, and it benefits both your company because now there's an easy integration with another popular product, and it also hugely benefits the community that you're trying to collaborate with. I mentioned recruiting earlier. On occasion, you'll sometimes meet people in the community who just get it, right? They understand your product. They're really excited about what you're doing. They have the right lingo. They know the right engineering stack. And they can just kind of seamlessly feed into your engineering teams already. And so passing these people off to recruiting is a fantastic way to help your, your recruiting team supplement their already great pipeline. And then lastly, of course, You'll, they'll occasionally run into people who are interested in purchasing the product. So you'll pass them off to sales, whether it's them or their manager or their team lead. And you, got, you get the idea, right? These connections, these collaborative conversations you're having in the community are incredibly valuable and might not have ever happened were it not for the developer relations team direct involvement and collaboration with that community who now knows and trusts them. And these leads are incredibly important to keep track of, not only for the DevRel team, for them to be able to show value, but also for the company, because it allows you to see trends throughout the industry. It allows you to notice when there might be another audience that you were unaware of who's suddenly interested in your product. For instance, if the DevRel team is out on the road and meets some front-end developers who are really excited, and your product typically focuses on ops or security professionals, Make a note of that, right? And then follow that pattern as they're continuing to speak to more community members down the road. These leads also contribute community value because as you're making these introductions between community members and your coworkers, they're also making these introductions between community members. So they're fostering those conversations in the community, allowing, especially for open source companies, conversations to happen and maybe you now have a handful of people who are willing to work together to push out that feature request that your engineering team hasn't had time for. And we as developer relations professionals have this unique talent. And the second reason why I really love this term qualified leads is because it highlights this unique value that we already bring to the table without us having to do a lot more or figure out different ways to show our metrics. So the next time the stakeholder comes and says, hey, what, what are the metrics that you actually provide? What are the, what's the value that you provide? It goes back to something that we're already doing and we're already collaborating with, both internally at our company as well as externally with our community. But so what? Who cares, right? How does this impact you? Why does it matter for you if you're not involved in developer relations? It matters because at the end of the day, these connections help you make a stronger product, help you be more connected with your community, help you better serve the community that you're there for, which at the end of the day means a better bottom line for the company, means your company is going to be around for longer, means you can reach more people, create more relationships, and continue to serve a broader technical community. I love this quote from Zan Markin's blog post, and it's titled, Developer Relations is Developer Enablement. And I think it applies to all communities, whether they're technical or not. But he says, enabled developers are productive, less likely to churn, and better suited to champion our products and services inside their teams, organizations, and wider networks. And Twilio's developer evangelism team has the same viewpoint, right? They put it this way. Our job is to inspire and equip developers to build the next generation of amazing applications. This means understanding what they're trying to do, having conversations, pointing them to tools and training, potentially internally, using those leads that I was talking about earlier, and generally helping them be successful. 
And it's not necessarily an inexpensive endeavor, right? It costs money to send people out to make those relationships, to spend the time on the road, to spend the time doing video calls from home. But it's completely worthwhile, and Twilio is a great example of why, right? They have a hugely successful company with a developer and community-focused strategy, and they were told when they started that it wouldn't be successful, and they've proved a lot of people wrong. And this continued engagement with and empowerment of this developer community is something that can set companies apart from your competition. It can make a difference in how the community is viewing you. It can make a difference in the trust and loyalty, the churn, like was in Zan's quote from earlier. It makes a difference in how your company reaches the broader technical community as a whole. And this leads me to my final point. Having a single metric of success that can be used across the industry to not only help the developer relations teams, but help our colleagues understand what the value is that we're contributing back to the company and help everybody collaborate more with the community that we're trying to serve makes a huge difference across the entire technical industry, not just for DevRel. For executives and stakeholders, it helps them point out one of the many outcomes that not only drives forward community awareness, but actively and tangibly proves the value of nurturing and collaborating with the technical community. I am super passionate about this topic, as you can probably see. I have a book that delves into it in a lot more detail. If you're interested in chatting, I'm around all day, or you can hit me up online as well. Thanks so much for your time.